It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted? One translation says depressed. Why are you depressed? Hope thou in God. One translation says expect God to act. Expect it. For he says, for I will yet praise him. What does that mean? Anchor's going down. I'm still going to praise him. I'm still going to praise him. And he is the health of my countenance. Woo, come on. Come on, you got to feel sorry for people in this world that have no hope. Or it's set on natural things instead of your hope reaching into the presence of Jesus, laying hold upon that like an anchor. Why are you cast down? How many ever had to talk to yourself? Hallelujah. Faith, hope, and love. Why are you depressed? Why are you feeling bad? Why are you feeling down? So he's talking to himself. You have to talk to yourself. Why are you acting like this? Sometimes just look yourself in the mirror and say, I need to talk to you right now. <laughs> then tell yourself, don't look down while I'm talking to you. <laughs> so I'm getting tired of your attitude. You need to have a positive expectation. You've got a bright future. No matter what things look like, no matter what has happened, a positive expectation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Actually, Psalm 62 says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is only upon Him. Amen. Amen. In other words, he says, you have to isolate your expectation only on God. Amen. I said it's only on God. My, my anchor reaches into his presence, into his promise, into his word. The Abraham had said, against hope, he believed in hope. Other translation says, when it looked impossible, he believed it's possible. Smith Wigglesworth said, faith laughs at impossibilities. So you pick three things right now that look impossible and practice laughing at it. Come on, the devil said, you'll never change. That'll always be that way. That's going to always stay that way. You say, ha, ha, ha. It might look hopeless, but my hope is anchored all the way into the presence of Jesus. A cheerful, confident expectation Something good is happening to you. Man, you need to laugh about that one. Now turn, turn to Romans 15, 13. Praise the Lord. Woo! Can you find Romans 15, 13? And uh, in the King James, it says this. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. All right, let's try that one more time. This is just the King James here. Y'all still ready for that? How I many think you could run the devil off with the King James? Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. 
Come on, even when you're, when you're facing the death of a loved one. I know, I know the experience my mom, when my mom and dad went to be with the Lord and the feelings that you go through. But while we were there, we remembered the teaching of the Word. When my mom died, you know, I had a lot of different kinds of feelings. My dad, a lot of different kinds of feelings. Kind of uh, angry and mad, and then I got sad, and I had to work through all that. But I went back to this. My hope, my confidence, my expectation, my countenance. Why are you distressed? Paul said, you can sorrow, but not as those who have no hope. Let's try this out over here. Come on, he said. He said, I'm going to basically give you one night to cry about that. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So God said, you, you cannot stay sad. You cannot grieve the way people who have no hope. One of our good friends, several of our good minister friends have gone to be with the Lord just in the last 12 months. And so we were there in uh, uh, Atlanta area for Pastor Bruce Black, Bruce and Cindy. And they're pastoring there in Atlanta area. And Bruce just went home to be with the Lord. Well, we've been friends for many years. And so uh, Bruce in his last breath, he said, I'm ready to go. Come on, you've got a tremendous hope and expectation beyond this world. You have a bright future beyond this world. He said, I'm ready to go. So we laughed a little bit and told him a couple of jokes. And, uh, and then he said, well, I want you to come and do my memorial service. I said, well, I'll be glad to. So they schedule it. And so um, I went there to do the memorial service, me and Pastor Hagen. So Pastor Hagen did the inside of the church, and I did the graveside. Well, I went to a lot of funerals as a kid, and I didn't like none of them. <laughs> my dad did over 200 funerals, I think. So he'd take me in, so I didn't like any of them. Well, I went to this one, but Cindy said, and Bruce said, last words, I want this to be a victorious Memorial service. Well, now you got to deal with the kids and the family, you know, and all the families around. So you don't want to be disrespectful. So I said, now, Lord, how are we going to do this? <laughs> My friend, Pastor Charles Cowan, y'all know him from Nashville, maybe. It's Pastor Charles, he did a lot of funerals and he said, one, one of his funniest ones was he didn't know that the person was a, a veteran. So while he's standing by the grave, then seven guns went off. <laughs> so he said he was standing there, you know, real dignified. Seven guns went off and he's got down like that. <laughs> so I, I, didn't, I didn't do that bad. I love Pastor Charles. Anyway. So all the family comes around and you have the, you know, the grave there. There was another tent just about 50 yards from us, another family. And so while we were there, the Lord gave me these scriptures that he said that death is swallowed up in victory. He said, grave, where is your sting? Thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory. So imagine talking to the grave. Let's try that again. I said, imagine talking to your situation may seem like the worst thing that's ever happened to you and you're talking to it and you say, grave, you have lost your sting. Death, you have lost your victory. Jesus Christ is Lord in this life. He's Lord through death itself and we have eternal life and eternal redemption. We will not grieve like this. So it's funny, while I was preaching, the Holy Ghost came on. Well, I saw Bruce's wife, Cindy, and she, she started brightening up. She's like, I feel like running. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
She said, I was going to run, but I couldn't figure out how to miss all the different tombstones around there. She said, I'm ready to run. Come on, we have victory. We are the triumphant church. We have victory in life. We have victory in And that's real defiant, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, like just to defy what you're feeling right now. Yeah. Come on, when you're facing a challenge and say, where's your sting? Where's your victory? It may look like I'm facing a tremendous storm, but my hope, the anchor for my soul is holding me steady right now. Yeah. Come on, I felt it in my body. I felt it in my mind, but it never reached my spirit. I said, you didn't get my spirit. I still have a spirit of faith. Woo. Come on for a word, people. We need to act like that, right? So the atmosphere changed out there in the cemetery, and uh, we started praising and singing and rejoicing. The other grave just a few yards away. <laughs> but we have a hope that reaches beyond this world. We know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, you know, at my dad's, my dad's funeral, I struggled. I mean, mama asked me to speak at my dad's funeral. I said, mama, I just don't think I could do that. I'll just let them other people preach. She said, no, I want you. So my mama had, I'd never seen her depressed, but after my dad passed away, she was very quiet. Empty house. So I thought, all right, whatever you want, mom. So I got up and started talking about the faithfulness of God and the presence of the Lord, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The power of the Holy Ghost. Just fill that auditorium. There's over 2,000 people there, and there's only 3,000 in town. So you had all the politicians, you know, and the sheriffs and everybody there. So I started talking about the faithfulness of God from where they started and what the Lord had done over the 50 years. And while I was talking about that, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the great comforter, I said, he's the great comforter. I could feel his strength. And then I heard my mama say, hallelujah. Anchor is going down. I said, the anchor is going down. I said, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And well, that means depression or sadness and grief is not going to stay on me for the next five years or ten years. Come on, the devil will tell you, you'll never get over that. You're over that the moment you yield to the Holy Ghost and let the Spirit of God work on the inside of you. Well, Mama, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Then Trina was sitting next to her on the front row and, and um, she leaned over to Trina and said, Let's run. <laughs> well, there ain't no talking mama out of rejoicing. Back in the old days, she used to run around the church and praise the Lord. And after she did, my daddy would always say, some of you think that's not necessary. And it's not necessary unless it's necessary. So while they're trying to figure that out, mama would finish running, but usually somebody else would start running. So she uh, praised God. She started praying, tell Trina, let's, let's run. So Trina got on one side, another lady got on the other side. Boom, mama starts running around the memorial service. Well, I loved it. I started laughing as soon as she started running. 
because I saw the faces of all the dignitaries so, so over there. And being a preacher's kid, I like anything that's out of the ordinary. I've been in too many ordinary services, so I like anything out of the ordinary. And Wigglesworth said, you'll never be ordinary from the day that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. So mama took off running. I started laughing. And I thought, man, those guys must think my dad left her a lot of insurance money or something. <laughs> they had never seen a widow run around the church. What was she doing? Letting the anchor down. Come on, some of y'all are going to have to let the anchor down this morning. Come on, let the devil know I believe God. I have a positive expectation no matter what is happening in my life right now. And my anchor hold is holding me right now. Woo! Here's the way it says, I think the Passion Translation says, now may God, the fountain of hope. No hopeless situations here. I said no hopeless situations here. God, the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy. Come on, that's like laughing in the face of the enemy, isn't it? Like, ha! Ha! Come on, George Foreman fighting Muhammad Ali. George said, I hit him with everything I had. And Muhammad Ali said, is that all you got, George? And then he knocked George out for the first time. <laughs> Come on, no matter what you're going through in your life, you'll say, is that all you got, devil? Because I ain't finished. Come on, I'm still believing God. I'm still expecting his goodness. I'm still expecting his mercy. Woo! Praise the Lord. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, if you knew what God was working on for you right now, you couldn't even sit still. If you knew what he's working on for your life, things that are abundant, I sit back down just a minute. I'm just about to finish this verse. <laughs> God fill you to overflowing. That's when you can tell that hope is working in your life. Come on, your countenance. Never let your countenance be a picture of what you're going through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill you with uncontainable joy. Listen, listen. Here's the way Dad Hagen said it. And he said, uh, 
woman came to him and said, I'm praying for my son. You know, he comes in late at night and he's out all hours of the night and he's living in sin. I'm praying for him. I said, and Dad Hagen said, well, do you preach to him all the time? She said, I preach to him all the time. He said, well, then stop it. Shut your mouth. He's grown now. You should have done that when he was two or three or four years old, but now he's grown. He said, so, so quit that. He said, and then just every time you think about it, you say, I surround him with faith and hope and love. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There is no doubt that we are living in anxious and uncertain times. The storms of life come to us all. However, when you put your hope in God, you have an anchor that holds you steady during the storms. This anchor will make you unshakable. In this new two CD set, Unshakable Hope, Pastor Mark and Trina will help us understand how hope in God is the anchor that makes us unshakable. This anchor goes into the presence of God and he holds us steady. This anchor of hope is our cheerful, confident expectation of God. Along with this new CD set, you will get the book, The Bloodline of a Champion. Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. This book has a brand new chapter about his grandson, Dylan, and how he overcame leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. Faith in the blood of Jesus can help us live in the reality of our redemption which gives real solutions to real people for real problems. By faith, we are a part of a new bloodline, the bloodline of a champion. Order this special package today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, Bloodline of a Champion, and the two CD set, Unshakable Hope. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. What a powerful message on hope. We all need hope, and you know, in life, we are going to face struggles, we're going to face issues and challenges, things will come up against us. That's one thing that we know in this life. Even though we're promised victory over them, we still are going to have challenges in life that may cause us to feel hopeless and it may cause us to feel like we just don't know what we're going to do. And that's when hope comes in because we have hope in Jesus. We have hope in what He can do in us and for us and through our difficult seasons. His hope will be an anchor for our soul. That's an anchor for your mind, for your emotions, for your thoughts, for everything that may come against you. It's an anchor and it will hold you steady in the craziest of storms. I have been in horrible storms in my life and I have been able to hold on to that anchor of hope that I know it may not look like it right now and it may not look like things will ever change, but I'm holding on to hope. I have hope in God. I have faith in God that even in the craziest storm, when the waves are going and they're crashing and the rain is coming down, I have an anchor in my soul, an anchor that is keeping my mind on Him. It's keeping my faith in Him, my confidence in Him. And I know that no matter what, I am going to be okay. It is well with my soul. You need this powerful message on unshakable hope. Go order this message. It will change your life. It will help you. If you're in the middle of a storm right now, you need this message. And if you are not, there will come a time, there will come a day when your faith is tested and challenged and you may feel hopeless but you will have this message and it will get on the inside of you and you will know I have an anchor that is keeping me steady, steadfast, my trust and hope in Him. Go order this message today. 
For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible, seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the Word on every avenue possible, broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do His part and make sure the Word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can. Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, BTN, and the Word Network, and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the Word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the Word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the Word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration, and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.